So Peter, man. this is the guy that teaches you about life. Period. End of story. Um, he's got a good story to tell, and he's also an author. He gave me a free copy of his book. Um, I would highly recommend reading it. I've probably read it seven or eight times, and now I have it all tabbed and sticky notes and all kinds of shit on it because it's good stuff. Um, he's going to talk to you about his path, his stuff, and he's also going to kind of talk to you about life, right? Goal yeah. setting, different things like that. And he's going to re emphasize the importance of paying attention to stuff like this because guys like me, we're the ones running colleges and running companies. Period. It's the, whether you like it or not, that's reality. <coughs> and we don't want TikTok videos. We don't want pictures of your dinner. We I would like to know how to get a bajillion views on TikTok. I know. Or even use it. That I could, right. That'd be cool. We don't give a shit that you care about something and you sit in your car and cry. We can't. We can't. We do. What are you doing? No, we don't. <laughs> I care what you guys think. When I, right. when I hire somebody, I look at that stuff. <laughs> And if I yeah. see that, I look at that and I say, this person's going to be a problem. Can they come to work, do their job, and go home? You know what I'm saying? So be cognizant of that as you move forward in your college career and in your professional life. Um, he has a very good message in his book. His company is called IVB. He will tell you what that stands for, right? Sure. About the, uh, the car with the hole in it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Scoreboard. Oh, yeah. But um, local guy, Willoughby South grad, uh, Notre Dame College grad. So um, I met him. I inherited him through marriage. <coughs> right? Yeah. And uh, every time I tell my wife that. Oh, it's forced upon you. Yeah. So like you're speaking in my class. Like, I remember when he was in my. I'm like, okay, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so. Luckily, there was no social media then. Oh, we'd both be screwed. Yeah. Four. So he's going to do his thing. I'm going to run to my office to get my stuff real quick. And I'm right there. Okay? Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank That's you. Dave. Again, we call him Backpack Dave. He's the best. Uh, also a Notre Dame grad. Yeah. He uh, did a lot of my media work when I ran for office. So, good dude. Knows his stuff. All right? Yeah. Like, you guys get the passion. You get the feel that he... Do you get the feeling that he actually cares about you? Yeah. And that. So, it's, <laughs> I don't care about your TikTok or this, that, you know, so that's, uh, but, you know, so just understand, just, you know, you're, you're very blessed to have George in your life. Um, George has been a huge blessing for me. Um, definitely, you know, that's one thing, um, and I'll kind of get more into this, the difference between, we'll talk about this, um, you know, social capital, and financial capital. Um, basic, like your social capital, like right now, all of you in this room, there's social capital here, right? So you don't have to have a bajillion dollars. Like you don't have to have a trust fund. You don't have to have, you know, like venture capitalists to create something great in your life. Now, whether that's, if you want to create lots of financial capital in your life, cool. You know, what if, but like, just understand that the social capital, like that is what is going to make your life special. And that is what is going to make um, life very fulfilling for you. Because anytime I, I reach out to George, I say, George, uh, I need this, or I'm thinking about this. And, and it's just, I know that, okay, if George doesn't necessarily have the answer, or the opportunity, or the connection, like he'll, he'll find it. Like he'll find somebody who does. And same thing. So just, um, you know, a collaborative mindset and a connected mindset. And it's, um, it's interesting because you know, I'm 39 now, so I I'm, I'm never thought I would be almost 40. So um, here I am, and I thought too, once, you know, once you're 40, you're dead, man. Like once you're 30, life's over thing, you know? So I will say going into 40, I feel younger than I did at 30. And at 30, I feel, at 30, I felt younger than I did in 20. So um, there, you're going to go through different phases of life. And I'll kind of talk a little more about mine. Um, but you know, what you want now, is it exactly what you wanted five years ago? Like, would your high school self 
want the same exact things you want now? Would that high school self maybe not even under, truly understand? And then what you want in high school, would your middle school self understand? And this, would your elementary school self understand? So, and I, right now I have a six-year-old son, a four-year-old daughter, and JJ, son JJ is very much into Zelda and video games right now, and me and him get yelled at because I get into it. But uh, that's one thing I want to challenge you, is have a video game you know, mindset you know, or, or lifestyle, whatever, whatever words are going to like resonate with you. And there's certain things I'm going to say, some of you are going to be like, man, that's awesome. And then I'll say but that same exact phrase, you're going to be like, that was dumb. You know, so just understand what, it, like George, I'm going to try and, and give you everything I can in hopes that you walk away with one thing. You're like, all right, that makes sense, or at least it makes sense enough to where I can take a step forward and pursue my goals. Um, but with this, when I'm playing Zelda with JJ, six years old, he loves just running around and playing the game. All of you know there is an end to the game, right? There's a boss, and he knows there's a boss, right? But any, I mean, I'm assuming you've all played a video game or board game or some type of something in your life, right? So as you get older, it's not about enjoying the game, right? It's not about the game. It's about, OK, I got to finish it, right? Like even like this class. I, I, I got to pass this class, and then I got to pass this class, and then I got this, and I got my degree, and then I got to do this, and I got to da, da da So don't stop pursuing your dreams, right? Don't stop going after your goals. And this is, again, this is me talking to myself right now. I've spent 16 years going from not knowing any, and I'll get more into it, I promise, not knowing anything about what I do in business. The business I have now knew nothing, zero background, mm -hmm. zero connection, zero anything. I got, I got basically was forced into it because I couldn't find a job out of college. And as of last year, I'm officially ranked top 1% in the world at what I do. So going from basically negative percent to the top 1%, you know, I've just been on this mission, right? I've been on this mission to beat the game. Beat the game of life. Do you really beat life? Nobody makes that out alive, man. <laughs> I'm going to try. But understand that, how you doing, man? Um, come on in. Come on in. Uh, the, uh, live your life like a video game that you don't want to end. Does that make sense? You can still go find the difficult area, but like if you're in a difficult, you're fighting a difficult boss and you can't beat it, fine. You have a difficult class, like I look back, what I am the most proud of are the things that made me so furious that I couldn't figure them out. I couldn't, I couldn't just check it off my list. It took time, right? So think about in your life, are there things that you're proud of because it was the hardest thing you had to do? So whatever you're going, all of you have something going on in your life right now. At school, home, personal life, relationships, whatever it is. There is a constant level of stress and things pulling at you all the time. And what I would tell you too, every day of life gets better. But it simultaneously gets harder. My life has never been so good. But my life has never been so stressful <laughs> at the same time. All right. So my goal is again, we, we'll talk through some things. Of how do you how do you manage that? But what's up, buddy? What's up? Welcome back. So it sounds silly. It's cliche. I was a cheesy dad joke guy before I became a dad. But <laughs> enjoy what you got. Right. No matter where you're at, where you're from, enjoy it. Okay. So. <coughs> Circling back to my story, um, I was homeschooled till seventh grade, the oldest of four boys, and uh, we're all two years apart. My mom's a saint, and my dad's a saint. Everybody's, um, so I went to Wilby Middle School in seventh grade, 
And again, talking about social capital, I knew basically two people from the neighborhood. Besides that, I knew nobody. So I remember sitting first day of school at the lunch table. My buddy that lived the street over was down at the one end of the cafeteria table, like where, like the lunch table, and I'm all the way down here, and this guy, Greg Devan, who's one of my best buds now, <laughs> sitting across from me, and I'm just like sitting there, like hoping, like someone talk to me, like, like, like this is so awful, right? And uh, I remember him just looking at me like, so, do you talk? And I was like, man, you, you wish you didn't ask that question, so as you guys can tell, I, I can talk. But, you know, but from there, it just kind of, you know, getting to become a friend of him and all that, you know, so for me, Loyalty and relationships and connection it was it was very important to me because I knew what it was like to have them. Okay, so but can you get into too many, you know, relationship have like too many people that like you're never able to say no? Is it is it a balance between like okay these are solid relationships I want to keep them going but identifying okay this is. I want to have, I want to be everybody's friend, or I want everybody to like me, but these are toxic relationships. Is it important to identify toxic relationships in your life? Okay, because they're toxic now. I'm not saying that miracles don't happen. <laughs> it's probably toxic forever. Okay, so, um, but yes, almost in seventh grade. Again, so I started. I didn't know it, but I was building the number one thing that I was going to need to go from being the bottom of business in the business industry to being top 1%. And that was social capital. I was rich beyond imagination with positive, meaningful relationships. Okay. I actually, you know, it, it was just, and this is to my mom and dad's credit, you know, a lot, just like treat others how you want to be treated. That was, and you know, just care about people, love people. So um, fast forward, graduate from Willoughby South High School. Um, my nickname at South High School for my buddies was Dumb Pants. And that was actually, so George, uh, Monty gave me that nickname. We were, band, we were playing in the band, the band was going to make it. But I just, I'm an okay guitarist, but I can't read music. I, I just Dumb pants. talk, I'm talking about things that are super, super difficult that you're proud of. Like how I eventually met my wife was playing a show with my buddy, you know, playing guitar and singing and, and doing so like very proud that I ended up doing a lot in music because it was not natural for me. Okay, I was dumb pants because I couldn't keep up with the band, I couldn't figure it out. Like and then um, you know, a lot of it too is undiagnosed ADHD <laughs> all through. I even graduated college, I get out of college and um, finally like someone's like, hey, you know, you should you check this stuff out, and uh, but just think of like again. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I was able to fight my way. Like school was the worst, the worst. Please don't call me teacher because I was trying to pay attention and I went somewhere else. You know, it's the squirrel schleicher brain. You can't you can't contain it? And as you can tell, I'm trying to corral it right now. <laughs> Envision me like James Day on test. But um, the uh, yeah, so that was high school. That was fun, um, but I you know, so like I couldn't excel in the classroom, but I was was trying to lose weight for football. Ended up getting good at long distance running. So again, the, one of the last things I ever thought I'd be doing, one of the hardest things for me to do, ended up setting some school records. Um, you know, we were conference champions and yada yada. Yeah, so just found okay, that was my escape, right? So high school me, all I cared about was running. College me starts to feel the physical <laughs> effects of I destroyed my body in high school, but now it's really starting to catch up. So I had one healthy season out of five years of college. Um, Miss Nationals, I think it was by like seven seconds. That was a little tear to my eye. But just think of everything that I cared about, and it sounds silly to say out loud now, was running. So my life as I knew it was over. So will you have moments throughout your life where everything as you knew it is over? Like we will all go through different phases of life and who you were, let me take that back, who you are shouldn't change, right? Who you are should be this constant thing you're working on, but who you are is what makes you unstoppable, right? That's what makes, 
what makes you different, bro? What makes you unique? Well, you, right? There's nobody like you. And that's the point. That's, that is the amazing thing about life. But you have to realize you're going to have to reinvent your, your purpose or reinvent your passion. And it's, it's, it's something that you're going to have to work on proactively. Like it's, it's sometimes for me, like I couldn't find a job. So I, I, get, I hated business. I took no classes in it. business. People were evil, right? I became this evil business guy, right? So, um, and just pretty please when that page turns, it's the next chapter of your life. Most people, that's when they have, and myself included, it's an identity crisis. Does that make sense? So you're going from, I went from middle school to high school and then high school to college, I was having identity crisis. If I'm not James, the star runner, who am I? I had, and then I was dating the same girl for five years and we broke up in college. So if I'm not so-and-so's boyfriend, who am I? And, you know, so just fe the feeling of feeling very lost, all right? Very blessed that there was a guy, Jason Chuhei, I owe him so much, but I always introduce him. He's the reason why I did well in college. Is he transferred in, he was two years older, um, but in Notre Dame, he had to take your theology, your philosophy. So he was in all these classes with me. I remember getting a, a knock on the, the dorm room door, and I may have been playing video games, not sleeping, because I had to win another NCAA championship for video games. Four, four in a week was my record, but. Um, it's like, Schleicher, we got to study. I'm like, study? Man, the test is next week. Like, what? what? So yeah, man, we got to get going. So he instilled in me that love and passion for being smart. And being smart is not my, like, that is not my natural gift. I was telling George before, like, you know, how's, you know, JJ's in kindergarten, but how's he doing this? When, when we were pregnant with my son, before I knew if he was going to be a boy, People say, oh, you want a boy or a girl? I'm like, as long as my child has my wife's brain, we're going to be OK. You know, so just I love that I can be creative. Like, my, my natural tendency is like, I don't see things for where they are. I'm always like, how can we make this better? Like, how can we make this more fun? You know, how can we? You know, so like, I can't just, I try, I've tried the whole fall in line thing. Like, I can't see the world the way everybody else does. I can't you know, think the way everybody else does. But, um, you know, I was like, I remember I made the, uh, the Dean's List, and I was like, this is awesome, right? And then I never missed the Dean's List again until my last semester, and I really just didn't care anymore. So <laughs> that's all that thing, stay strong through your last semester. But, um, you know, I ended up, my, you know, Jason, I want to graduate with honors, so I want to graduate with honors. And so just think of like what ended up happening is when my identity as a runner went away, now other things started to open up. So I was president of student government for two years. I couldn't tell you what student government was, was or about. But now I'm president. And then um, I was you know, editor for the newspaper. I was um, the cat. Well, I still ended up being captain of the track team like one year or whatever, but like again, just like I started getting involved in all these things. The next thing you know, I'm getting this who's who award for you know colleges and universities. Uh, I was getting this Kappa, I think it's Kappa Gamma Pi award, but it's like the top you know national award for Catholic colleges, and um, it was just wild. I won. Uh, it, was, it was an a, a excellent, one of the most proud things of my college career was basically having to drop out of an English class. That was just, it was just a grammar class that, with a professor that was just owning me. And she was awesome. Great professor. Um, but I ended up getting like the Excellence in English Award. Excellence in English Award. What did I tell you when I first started? Not good at writing. Very awful at spelling. I, why is my book basically four pages? <laughs> All right. I wrote it, so you can read it quick. I can read that in an hour. You could probably read it in 20 minutes. But understand that, so talking about like finding that purpose, finding that challenge, like, okay, 
if I go about this, this the traditional way, I'm going to suck, right? I can't, I, so I had to find ways to get creative. And so that was like one of the proudest things for me was like, okay, I went from basically a dropout in, a, in my intro English class to you know, being the top English award, okay? Um, so we talked about this yesterday for Georgia's MBA class. If you want to um, write this down. So joy, find joy, right? Focus. So joy and focus. Focus on finding joy. That'd be a good thing. So what you focus on, does it magically start happening? If I focus on being negative, well, I have the worst day ever. If I focus on how bad my day is going, it's just, it will not stop being awful. All right? The, is what I'm trying to get through here is I focused on running and it ended. Then I started focusing on something else. So just find whatever it is that drives you, that makes you feel. And these, so these are words to keep. This is a word to delete. Anybody ever tell you, hey, you should do this? Or you think to yourself, well, I'm supposed to, right? Now, when it comes to being a good human being and following the law, you know, like there's, <laughs> there's rules and laws of life that, yes, you should follow them, and it, it's what you're supposed to do. And it's, you know, so if it's your moral compass talking, listen to it. But if it's basically you in that identity crisis or your fear, right? Our fear drives us to make decisions a lot. So it's overcoming that. So um, fast forward, double major in English and communications, double minor in psychology and writing again, not one accounting class, not one finance class, not one business class. I assumed I'm going to walk across stage. I got you know, graduate honors. I got these awards. I double major, double minor. I mean, come on. There's going to be employers waiting for it. Like, I'm just going to be. You know, get my degree, and there's going to just a line out the door. Did you hear that James Schleicher graduated? And we can now hire him and pay him six figures and put him in a leadership role, and then we can get him his company car, and then, you know, oh, man, we'll, we'll probably fly him all over the world because everybody needs to know James because he has a great what? What, what is something? Big resume, right? His resume. Resume is important, right? I couldn't tell you like how to build a great resume. I'm very blessed. The last 16 years, I haven't had to worry about it. But understand that I assumed because of how good my resume was and all the things I did that people would start looking for me. Is anybody ever going to be searching you out for your opportunity? George says no. Rarely. Right. It happens. Yeah, and you, you're more, so I guess, George, you're more in tune with this stuff. So, like, I mean, resumes. Don't mean shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's they, all, a lot of it's contacts. You'll get yeah. sought after when you're about 15 years deep in your career. Yeah. Because then it's based on, then you have your network, it's based on reputation, stuff like that. Your first, 10, 15 years in the workforce is creating your own path. Mm -hmm. Okay. And most people won't ask you where you went to college, what your GPA was. They're, they don't care. Yep. They just want to, did you graduate? Yep. And you may think to yourself, okay, well, this is all useless. I don't need to go to college. You do because it shows the employer that you can commit to something for four to five years and see it through. Mm -hmm. And that's what they look for. Yeah, so it's not the resume. It's not the degree, right? What did we talk about before? Social capital. Social capital. It's that you're going to get an opportunity somewhere, and you're like, man, we need somebody that is really good at, the, and you're going to like, oh, yeah, I remember, I sat next to her in class. Let me reach out to her. A lot of how I built my business was reaching out to my college buddies with no, with no money, like, hey, man, <laughs> hey, you want to have a meeting real quick? But just 
long before there was a dollar sign attached to anybody doing business. Like, I had no intention of getting business. But when I did, a lot of it, you know, a lot of my success is because people are like, again, talking about it's not what you do, right? It's not what you do. It's who you are. James, I've known you forever. I know you're a good guy. I know I can trust you. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't understand your industry lingo. Because that's another thing, too, is whatever industry you get into, you're going to be like all excited about it, the, all this whole new language that you know, and nobody else, it's not that nobody else will care. <laughs> Most people are like, I don't understand what you're talking about. You know, like, so just again, but they will understand, I remember, when we were in George Phillips' class, that when I needed help, when something happened to me, so-and-so was there for me. I remember so-and-so was always kind to me, right? So this, the whole social capital thing, like it, that is probably one of the most important things that I could, I could beg you to focus on, all right? It's like you're not, it's not about using people, right? It's not about being a go-getter. About being a go giver. Give back to people. And there's a book called The Go Giver, which is the first book I actually was able to read, <laughs> front to back and done. But it was it's it's a very it's more of a story than like a textbook. But that would definitely, you know, challenge you to check out that book, but just have that mindset is just again, it's not about rolling over and you know, letting people take advantage of you, right? But it is about finding like how can I give? So when George and I are talking, we're on the way talking about some stuff he's got going on. It's like my mind starts going to, okay, well, how could I help him connect with, mm -hmm. I got ideas. I was having some ideas. I'm writing it up the, right now. All right, cool. Stuff. But I got some ideas. Most you know, so just think people. of, you know, how you can connect people. And be kind to people. Mm -hmm. And I'll be a little more blunt than James is. Um, there's going to be a lot of people when you get out of school here that are going to tell you you can't do something. Mm -hmm that you don't, you're crazy, you're a dreamer, whatever. If you want to give them the finger, do it privately yes. in your own head. But here's the funny part. Those same people are going to come back and circle back and want something when you hit your goal. And there's a very kind way to say no to that. Yeah. Um, when I started my basketball team two years ago, James... Dave and about five other people said, go, go get it. Yeah. Literally everybody else said either nothing or could care less or didn't want to help me, didn't return my call or said, you know, people disappear, man. People yeah. disappear. <laughs> um, I'm online right now looking at national championship rings because we just won the national championship. And we are the number one minor league basketball team in the entire country for the next 12 months. So it's amazing the phone's starting to ring again. Isn't that cool? It's kind of cool, but it's kind of fun to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'll call you back later. You know what I mean? You don't want to burn bridges, yeah. but be cognizant of people that are in your life when you weren't anything and when you didn't achieve anything and believed in you and stuck by you. And that's, and two, um, so on that note, um, oh, uh, so graduate college, there was no employers waiting for me. And I, uh, I went from my mom's basement, you know, after graduation, moving to my grandma's basement. Um, so I had $18 in checking, and I had $50,000 in student loan debt, because I just had to run track. Um, but the, uh, um, at a 98 Pontiac Grand Am, that when I first started my business, um, I would, again, you, I was taking appointments like hours away. Three, I remember the one three hours away. Um, so a lot of times I'd break down on the drive. I didn't break down the drive system, but I'd break down the drive. So imagine me like saying, hey, your future, it's safe in my hands. I got you back. Like, oh, cool, man. All right, let's meet next week. Perfect. I'll see you then. And I leave. <laughs> Can't get out of your driveway because my car won't start. I come back like, What's your name, sorry? Will. Will. Will, hey, you know about your future? I'm going to help you with that, I promise, but I need you to help me with my present. 
can you can you help me get out of here <laughs> get a bar again this is before like everybody had cell phones and all stuff but like you know so how confident are you now to hand over your life to me to help you build and plan now that I'm basically like can you get me out of your driveway a lot less, yeah. Confidence level has gone down. So magically, a lot of people, <laughs> those are always the meetings that went awesome. <laughs> this is when I would be stuck in the driveway. Um, but the one that really sticks out, I drove three hours for a meeting. And um, like, yeah, yeah, you can come out and talk to us. And term we use called getting porched. So this is, again, whatever, whatever first step that you take in that next chapter of life, you have to understand that a lot of what George talking about too, people won't necessarily try to make you feel less than human and try and treat you bad, but understand that that comes with, that comes with the territory, right? You have, there is, you have to earn your way and you have to, like you, I might be, sound a little extreme, but it was like, I felt like I was just getting drop kicked to the face like emotionally, mentally, spiritually, like every day. And, um, but again, if it's something that you believe in, keep it going, all right? Um, but I, so pull in the driveway, cause my car's working again. And I walk up and um, get up on the porch, hence the porch thing, okay? Knock on the door. Okay, no answer, it's cool. The window's open, cause it's a nice day. TV's on, I could see, like, you know how, like, someone's sitting in a chair, like a, like a recliner, and you can, like, see, like, the back of their head? So I'm like, okay, they're here. It's okay, they just didn't hear me. And, uh, I see, like, the head kind of move, and then, like, nothing. And I look, okay, both cars are in the driveway. Third time's a charm, right? Okay. And then, like, it was like the wife kind of, like, see her through a window a little bit come into the room and, and all you hear is, don't answer it, it's him. Not even James, it was him. And I just remember like just that sinking feeling of like, you gotta be kidding me. Right, so it's one thing if I drove three minutes. It's not a thing if I drove 30 minutes. I just drove three hours just to basically stand here and look like a complete, complete idiot, right? Was not my was not a very shining moment for me, right? However, do you think that that why am I telling this? I think I'm proud that I went through that and I overcame, like survived that. Like that's one of my proudest memories is that didn't break me. I wanted it to, <laughs> I wanted it to, I wanted to tap out. But I remember driving back, and then um, on so 271, I was. Uh, coming up that to our Willby office and I remember seeing the progressive buildings because it was I was thinking about I was basically came down like going into business or I was going to work at progressive and progressive amazing company they do a lot of awesome things fantastic fantastic place to work but I just it wasn't part of my like hey I want to control my destiny kind of thing but I remember like a crazy person driving by those buildings on 271 and just screaming like, why am I not sitting in a cubicle making a salary? I may have said some other words in there too, but just, you know, that was, you're gonna have those moments. And that's where you gotta decide, again, is it something that, hey, this isn't for me. Right? There, was no, there was no point though, when I was in this journey, where I didn't think that like, hey, like, the way I'm able to help people, I love it. But like actually getting to the point where I'm at now was like, it was just awful. You know what I mean? But just so if, if you have something you believe in, you're passionate about, it's, you're, you're gonna basically be able to suffer through. Any um, athletes in here? Okay. So sports is a great example of like business and even like academics, right? The hours and hours, like finals next week, the hours and hours and hours of studying for that one test, right? There's pain, there's suffering to go through to get the result you want. Sports, would you put yourself through that amount of pain and suffering for 
<laughs> for anything else. Like when you put your body and your mind through that, that pain, just to, just cause, because you, maybe you're feeling like it, you know. But you have this ultimate goal in mind, right? So think of like the career world and your life. Like that's you want to think of life like that ultimate test that you're just you're studying for this ultimate test. You're training for this ultimate game, right? This ultimate showdown. Okay. Um, Cool, I'm, I'm ranting on here. Is this helping, is this good? All right, um, so can I talk about this? And so have you heard of emotional intelligence? Okay, so let's talk about like EQ versus IQ. Okay, I'm not dumb, right? But I, I am not intellectually you know, like it doesn't come natural for a lot of what the world deems is smart, okay? Here, why do we have the number one team in the country the last seven years? Why am I top 1% of the world what I do? Why, am I, why is my marriage still existing and why do I have a good relationship with my kid? It's not because of how intelligent I might be. It's the emotional, so they say emotional intelligence, EQ, what is it? It's Self awareness. I'm just going <laughs> to try to write. So, self awareness. Do each of you true, like, you know I'm really good at this. And you also know I'm really bad at this. I struggle with this. What do we usually try to do with the things we're not good at? It's like, yeah, we're just going to. It's going to move that out there, right? So this, again, depending on who you ask, you might, you're going to get different answers, right? Is, is that OK to go and try and talk to, I'm going to talk to George about this. I'm going to talk to Dave about this. I'm going to talk to James about You know what I mean? Like just reach out to people you trust. Say, hey, I'm really good at blah. Or, I'm really bad with this. You know, I went from the mindset of I am going to be the best at this one thing. Everything else, like I can't fix your car. I'm not handy. I, you know, I want to be manly, but I'm not manly. You know, I mean, it's just like I can't. Hey, <laughs> I gotta own it, right? So, I'm in talking about like all my injuries in college. Like, okay, like physical, physically demanding career and job. Like, I wasn't gonna make it. You know, so just that's where you have to kind of identify. Like, okay, if I'm gonna pick one thing, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna stay in one lane. Be the best at it. And there's what's called, um, if you want to write this down, channel capacity. Channel capacity is, let me check that. We got what, another 20 minutes, George? Yeah. You can go to about 11.15. Okay, all right. So I, pro <laughs> I promise I'll try not to make this boring. So channel capacity. Basically, think of it as it is your biological limitation. It's your brain's limitation of being able to hold on to memories, to knowledge. Like, so have you ever like, read something and you're just trying to recall it and it's, it's just not there? Okay, so it's a, it's a <laughs> wonderful part of being human. The way our brain works, this whole channel capacity, why it's so important. Why is it so important to find you know, a handful of things and be the best at them and focus on those? And not, it's like you don't just say, all right, well, I'm going to be really good at this and I'm just going to stop paying my taxes. I'm going to stop, you know, I'm going to stop being, you know, a good person over here. So it means mean, so like just please understand so like whatever you decide to make like your craft, like your, your, your next step, your next journey, be the absolute best at that. And less is more, a more narrow focus, because our brain, the way it forgets things, is the same way as though, so if you took out your phone and you took a picture, and your phone, being our you know, ten phones of brain, your phone's like, oh, new picture, awesome, I'm going to delete a random picture. So every time something new comes in, something random goes out. So you notice that, but the things you focus on intensely, 
the things that you are intensely focused on in life, you magically remember those? What you actually care about and actually focus on? It's like, oh yeah, I can, I can pull that up right now. But the stuff, you, so it's hard because there, is there a lot of life that you're gonna have to like try to remember and have to know and get through that you don't like? Again, where you're at now, I love the social aspect of college. I, it was awful. It was a struggle for me. So there's going to be things you don't like to do, but if you can make them fun and you can insert creativity, make it your, your own little video game, then the mundane gets fun and the fun things get more fun. Okay. Um, any questions or anything before I start? I'm going to kind of go through and hopefully answer some questions. Good? All right. And you guys aren't sleeping, so it's good. Everybody's awake. So I'll start with you. If I don't know the answer, um, I will try to help find someone who can. But what thus far, in, like what hasn't school taught you that you, you want to know or need to know to kind of like for, take the next step for your career or life? Um, probably how to deal with Awesome. And the horse industry is very judgmental. Mm -hmm. So we deal with a lot of rejection. So, um, Can you give me like an example? So to run a barn, you can have all the expertise of it. Yep. But we're mainly just like, um, Mm -hmm. So, like, I know you have to build a reputation, but mm -hmm. if you don't have that reputation, you're like, oh, you're not worth it. Like, mm -hmm. just leave. So, how do you get past that? Okay. Well, you just drive three hours, knock on their door, get humiliated, break down in their driveway, and then poof, you, you know, yeah. you're successful. No, um, it's only that easy. The re <sighs> anybody else have... Like as re you know, this again, this is this is a safe place, right? Rejection, as a as human beings, do we all have the fear of rejection, right? We are all wired. Like we don't want to be rejected because think about it, going back to you know living in caves, living off the land. If we get rejected from the tribe, like we're screwed, right? It's a death sentence. So that rejection you're feeling, that rejection I was feeling, we're not we're here, right? We're not dead. But the feeling, right, that intense feeling you get when you're getting rejected, it, it is, is so much deeper than what, is actually, you know, what just happened. Um, so does anybody have any feedback how maybe you deal with rejection or something that uh, you, you could offer as? Go ahead. Me personally, I just worked on my craft and being the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. just hoping somebody else in a different area, different market to see the value in yeah, the value I see my, my soul. Best version of myself, right? Is that kind of what I've been talking about? Is like that. This is the video game, right? Just trying, just kind of level up, just trying to level up. You say a little bit, and and I don't remember like your exact word, but I'm not trying to summarize. But you're talking about like find people that see it. Yeah. Interesting. Is that not what reputation is? Here's what sucks about reputation. It takes forever to build, and it takes two seconds to lose. So again, we're... <laughs> if, if, again, don't get off social media. Don't get, I mean, but use it, so use it for, for things that are going to build your reputation, right? Of a complete stranger, regardless of age, regardless of background, regardless of where that in the world. If they saw your post, would that make them think more like, oh, like that, would your, it be a good thing for your reputation? And then they'd be like, ah, I, might, I might actually give them, reach out for them. Or something like, 
that's not the type of person I want to be associated with, or that's not the type of person I would want to work with. Does that make sense? Because when it comes to social media stuff, and this is something I've said for a long time, because social media is how our team really did go from nobody knew us to being like, you know, if you're at least in Lake County, like, we're, we're kind of everywhere, all right? But, um, you know, if you want to commit this to memory, <laughs> before your brain just automatically forgets it, but um, how you seem is who you are on social media, right? We all, like, I know you, but that complete stranger, if you post something that is out of, again, we're human, right? We get mad. We do stuff out of character all the time. I mean, there's tons of stuff I'm not proud of, okay? But could all of you be building your reputation right now and using social, using social media is something that when anyone else sees it, they're like, I want to, I want to be a part of it. I don't know what he or she is. I don't, I don't know what they're selling. I don't know what they're, why they're so happy today, but like, I like that. I want, I, I, want to, I want to be a part of that, or I want to have some of that in my life, okay? I've also had people come up to me, again, kind of friends, but like, you are so positive all the time, I just want to punch you in the face. I'm just like, well, thank you? You know, so just, again, if, if people want to punch you because you're so positive, that's a good problem to have, right? So that's, I haven't actually had a fight because of that yet, but there's been a lot of other fights that have happened because of negative things, right? So is this the rejection? There's some games you can play. Um, again, there's bajillion business books, sales books, you know, leadership books out there, but if you're not getting rejected, you're not trying, right? If you're not getting rejected, you're not over. If you're not getting rejected in real life, that means the fear of rejection, which is even worse, is keeping you from trying what you really want. Like it, it's seeking that. I don't know anything about horses other than they're awesome, but any way I can help you, and do you think George would help you and anybody in this classroom would help you, right? I stone two horses. Well, there, so there you go. <laughs> it is. It so. is a, it's stupid. When we bought our horses, we partnered with an established farm, mm -hmm. and they, we, we owned the horse, my, dad, my father and I. They would keep it at their facility, train it, feed it, and race it. When the horse got money, horse came in the money, we got 70%, they got 30 Okay. When the first time we went to the track to watch our horse race, you would have thought in those old western movies where like the guy walks into the saloon and the record stops and everybody looks at you <laughs> you know like who the hell are these two guys yeah and i was a dick. and again i'm glad it's social media this guy just looked at me and goes what are you guys doing here i says scoreboard in about three minutes and my horse won thank god um because i'm cocky like that um yeah. but yeah it's cutthroat but it to pile on or to Thing with his with the rejection and stuff like that in the social media you never know who you're going to meet too yep like we were in missouri we were in st louis from thursday through sunday winning the national championship and we, there's a little town called festus missouri and we went there for dinner the one night and then the next morning a couple of us got up and we went to this coffee shop and restaurant and there was this little kid in the restaurant, it was like a little diner, and he kept looking over at us. Because you see like nine tall guys and then, then me. Um, and finally the dad goes, you guys have a basketball team. And we explained who we were and stuff like that. And the little kid was like just all excited. He was like five years old. So I ran out to the truck real quick and grabbed one of our basketballs and had the whole team sign it and give it to him. The father sends, looks us up on our social media Follows our page. Okay, fine. It's not going to, you know, guys in Missouri. But then about three days later, he sends me a, a message saying, thank you for what you did for my son. I have a couple of my college buddies that live in Northeast Ohio that own businesses 
when you write up your sponsor package for next year, would you send it to me and I can get it out to them because what you did for my kid, he'll never forget that. No, well. In Missouri. Missouri. Like, Festus, Missouri is like going to Eastlake. Like, you don't plan a trip to the United States and say, I'm going to go to Eastlake, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Or Willoughby, Ohio, or whatever. But it just, it is. It's so true what he's saying with that. Do you see how... Was George like, I'm so smart, I'll go get that basketball. It will be a strategic plan to no. get business connections, right? No. I was like, doing something good for another human? First off, who actually feels the best about what that, what happened? Who feels better, George or them? Me. George. George feels real good that, that he did fun. that. And then... You get emotional intelligence, self-awareness. You know what it did, too? It put, so you're going to go through your career, and it's going to, like him, like, get rejected, reject. It sucks, mm -hmm. okay? Trust me when I tell you, I put on a really good face when it comes to this team, but we have been hemorrhaging money all season. My sponsor money ran out three months ago. I was using my own personal money to finish out the season. Part of me wanted to lose in the playoffs early. You know, and I hate to say that, but I don't have to then keep writing checks. And when that little kid came up to us and we signed the basketball for him and it made a difference for that one day, for that one moment for him, I sat back down and looked at my team and said, and this is why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to do with wins or losses, nothing to do with national championships or not, but that little kid, it made that kid's day. Yeah, when you, when you take care of people, yeah. Go giver, right? You have that go giver mindset. Emotional intelligence, social cap, all that. That's sweet. Cool. All right. Thank you for the example there. So, yeah, the horse part, and just understand again, you don't have the reputation. Um, maybe you won't, you might be like me. I'll never fit the mold of what they want me to be in my industry. I, so right now, I'm going to get negative feedback from people at our headquarters as to how come I'm not in a suit and tie, right? But I'm never, like, I'm not, I, that's not me, right? I love wearing a suit and tie, I love dressing up, but I also, like, that's just as simple as that is. Like, I'm not going to be what, what they say I should be, right? So that's where you don't have to be what the industry says you should have to be. You know, why is Apple so successful? Because they just fell in line? Because they just did what the industry expected? Or they said, we're going to be completely different. And we're going to, you know, we're going to just, we're going to create, we're going to be creative. We're going to think outside the box. We're going to create a whole new way for our industry to operate. Okay? So let's think, have that mindset. If, if I can't, if I can't beat them, I'm just going to Go around them and, and figure something out. But if take pride in this. And journaling helps a lot. If you're, if you're like you're feeling really like you're hurting, like journaling helps get a lot like things that you didn't even realize you were thinking about or feeling, but just writing it out, like getting it out of you and in front of you, because that's what's hard too, with like why why do people, you know, get road rage and jump out of their car and start you know, beating out windows and getting in fights and killing, like, what the heck just happened, man? Like, where did you have to be that was so important that you had to kill somebody, right? But it's the fact that at our core, right, we're just, we're animal, like, right, we're going to snap into these emotional, we're, they call it like mental hijacking, where you're just, your mind gets hijacked by your emotions and your feelings, right? Feelings are good, but unless you can get them out in front of you, how, how hard is it to make a decision? Like if, if, if you're gonna make the best decision for you, is it gonna be more likely that you can make the best decision be just trying to like figure it out what, you, what you're feeling or getting, writing it out, getting in front of you and then be like, ha, that's it. Susie rejected me and she's gonna regret it. And I'm going to call Freddie over here. So, you know what I mean? so just 
take pride in the losses. If everything, if everything went according to plan, I wouldn't appreciate anything, right? If everything in your life went according to plan, would you appreciate anything of what you have? Right? So uh, that would celebrate rejection. And one of my buddies, uh, this is probably four or five years ago, one of the things he would do that I stole, so something goes wrong. Say, like, yes, an opportunity. Right? Because what the whole cliche, you guys heard that like with what one door closes, a, a window opens, or if one door closes, another one opens. Have you ever heard that? Okay. One thing one of my friends told me earlier this year that helps make a lot more sense. When one door closes, yeah, another, another one opens over there. But it is absolute hell and torture down the hallway. The process from going from the opportunity loss to this opportunity, you don't really know what it is just yet. Does that make sense? It's going to be painful, but that's okay. It's part of the journey, part of the game. Um, cool. Thank you. What about you, brother? Mm -hmm. And then transitioning to like professional life, like how do you, because running for me is like an escape. Yeah. Will I use with school? Yep. And how do you balance like being super motivated in your business with also like having an escape? Yep. The, um, everybody hear that? Like having an escape is important. So like whether it's journaling or, uh, Running and like any type of exercise you can that is like a, the right fit. Like I can't run anymore. My hip will, it's dead. <laughs> it's, it's dead. So like you know, but for me like it's it's still having that routine. So think of like you want to have a some type of exercise that's a routine because when you're running, yeah, it's physical, right? If I'm working out, like any so anybody else exercise in here, work out, any you know yoga, anything. Is it really the physical activity that is the ultimate benefit, or is it up here? When you're on your run, do you have like some of your best ideas? You solve a lot of your problems on your run? Is it because you're running so hard? So whatever it is, just understand, like, keep that. You, know, you want to make sure that's a part of your life. So if you find that escape that helps you solve your problems, and it also, hey, by the way, it has physical benefits, and I feel good. You know, like there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of science behind all that. But um, transferring to the career, so if you could like, kind of, so I got caught up in like keeping it and all that stuff. But um, with running, and I know this just from my experience, could I just not running the past? Five, six years. Uh, how, like, what's the longest run you do? About 10. 10? Okay. Could I just up and do 10 miles with him right now? No way. Mentally, I've been there. I've run, you know, run 100 mile weeks in, uh, in college. So I've, I've done the mileage, but there's no way to cheat the system. So this, I think that's another thing. I'm, why is hard work important? Why is putting in the extra work important? It's because nobody can take it away from you. You can't, no one can take away that 10 miler that you've been doing away from you. So taking that into the career world, like taking that into whatever next chapter of your life, have that same mentality, because it's video game mindset, right? The thing about running, the second you run your fastest mile or fastest run, what do you want to do next? Run faster, right? And it just one second. Just one, I just gotta get one second, right? And so you, 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 you run your fastest time, and it's like, oh, it's a little more. It was a PR, PR, or somebody called PB, personal best. So that's, understand it's the mentality, the mindset of the running. Like, and if I look back, you know, <coughs> running, looking back, set me up for so much success in business in the career world because it was daily discipline. Putting myself through things, I'd, pushing myself past the limits that I'd, you know, I didn't realize were there. Under, like realizing I'm capable of more. 
So that's what you want to take, you know. What I loved about running too was you can't show up on race day and fake it. You can't pretend that you trained. And that's what I love about like business now. People make fun of me all the time. People said what I was doing was a joke because I was doing it my own way. And we have our awards bank. <laughs> We have an awards banquet here in the next couple of weeks that uh, they're flying us out to, and I'm giving a little speech. But they have like awards, it, you know, you get all decked out, and um, it's kind of like, it's not like uh, the Grammys or, or whatever, but like it's a whole to do. But I got my little Joker flower, I got my Joker socks for my, for my suit and tie because it's fine, you know, we've been the number one team. This last year was the first year that I was the the leader officially of the number one team. So it's like one of those things where you, people are going to say things to you to try and bring you down, whether they mean it, right? Some people will say stuff to you that like just, what was that for? But they're not, maybe they're not trying to be that way. Um, but just that end goal, that vision where you see yourself, where you want to be that last mile, that, do that last quarter mile where you're dead, but then magically, now you're kicking it in. Now you're running faster than you ran the whole race, the whole time. You know, like that's what I loved about business, because with, with physical work and physical exercise, does your body eventually just shut down, right? So like a lot of, I passed out my senior year of high school. I was in the lead in the two mile, two laps to go. And I crashed. Literally just my body shut down. What's cool in business is that as long as I, as long as there's enough caffeine in the world, I, <laughs> I can just keep on going, you know, so just, but it was like one of those things like, okay, this is cool because it's important to take care of your body. It's important to eat right and all that. But like, it was one of those things like, okay, now I, I put in that same work had that same discipline, same mindset. Like, you know I mean, like nothing changed, but instead of it being a physical game, now it was a mental game. And that, I mean, the career world, business world, it's, it's, so, it's just a mental minefield. It's, it's such a mental game, you know, so that's where it, it's gonna be tough, but is this helping you? Like, just, dude, just take all of you take that same mindset and the things you're sacrificing now, the things that are working for you now. Like, I remember sitting in my cubicle, first month or so, what I'm doing now, and I, think, I was thinking back to, like, again, the journey going from kid trying to lose weight for football to now he's setting school records, to the kid who you know, got hurt, and then now he's doing all this academic stuff. And, and so I felt like each chapter, like, starting at the bottom, made my way to the top. Get, but it's like, you always go back to the bottom. It sucks, right? So there I was, I'm like, I'm back to the bottom. I'm nobody again, right? And that's, it's a very difficult feeling to feel, right? And no matter where your next journey is, it's like, I, you're gonna have to start all over, and that's fine. But like we were saying before, it's okay, I started this class, I ended this class. Well, how did I get here? I showed up. I did the work. Paid attention, right? You just do the, you just keep showing up. <coughs> Magically, good things are going to start happening. So, that answer, I, I got fired. I'm trying to talk about running. I'm like, oh my gosh, don't get me started. But, all right. And, um, sorry, my plan is to call on all of you, but uh, I'm just hitting up the front row here. Uh, what's, we got like 10 minutes, so I'll try and uh, let's chat through yours. Okay. And functions more like when you don't want to succeed. And um, I guess where I learned from that it makes me want to be like a better person, both personally and like professionally, because those people want don't want to see you like succeed too. Mm -hmm. So do you find that like knowing that people don't want you to succeed drives you even more? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else kind of have that? Like that's how I am. Like tell me. My, my little saying for myself in high school was, 
tell me I can't, I'm going to do it twice. Mm -hmm. Right? If you tell me I can do something, I'll probably doubt myself. Right? I'll probably be afraid to take that risk. But if you tell me I can't, now I'm interested. So does any, anybody else have that? I right, said, so all of you in here, you're a bunch of losers. You never make it. Blah, blah, blah. Right? If that would get you going, cool. You know, but it's, but, under, but you got to be self, self-aware too. If like, that's not how you respond, like respond to things, like seek, you've got to seek people out as mentors and as coaches and as leaders in your life. Um, but that's, that's a, again, getting back to, I'm not trying to like make this all about social media and blah, blah, blah. Is there a lot of just people are walking around jealous of everybody else? Because, man, how you seem is who you are. So this person from high school, it seems like they're happy, right? Seems like they got it all. So we walk around like, oh, man, I wish I had so-and-so's life. Oh, I wish I had, right? But do you know how many pictures I have of my kids that I don't post? because they're not looking at the camera, they're not smiling, right? And it's, again, it's like one of those things, I'm not, it's not my style to be like, oh, I can only post pictures of my kids that are, but it's, it's again, human nature, it's like, okay, I want to post the best picture, right? So whatever it is, just understand. There's a lot of weirdos out there, too. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm serious. Yes, like sorry, the, I didn't the, forget about that. The troll social media? Um, I know personally people that have, I don't understand why you have to tell everybody you're going on vacation in three days mm. or the countdown to Disney. Oh my God, I'm so excited. You know, yeah. because people case mm. social media accounts and when you take a picture and post it, me and my love in Paris, oh my God, you know, and all that kind of shit, then guess what? All the weirdos out there know you're not home. You know, um, look at crime statistics, too. This is interesting. Crime statistics of house break-ins happen at houses that put signs in their yards for graduations and babies. Because they know there's expensive gifts in there, statistically. It's nuts. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it, it's, the guy in the FBI told me that about two weeks ago. It, it's crazy how goofy people yes. are. Sad. That's why you guys can't be like that. Yeah. Don't be goofy. Don't be. Don't so, be weird. Don't be weird. It, uh, unless it's a cool weird like me, right? It's, uh, uh, the. Yeah, that's a whole nother element. All right. So this again, is it easy to lose? You hear stories like that, right? It's and you see. I mean, think about. It. We're bombarded. Bad news. Bad news. Like social media. Like the news was always bad news for the most part, right? But you had to at least turn on the TV, at a certain time. Right? But now it's like bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. So if you get you can get caught up very easily in missing the majority of the positive things that are going on in the world, right? So if you're just focusing on the negative, that's all you're gonna find. Focus on the positive. You're gonna find a lot of negative when you're focusing on the positive. You'll always find negative, but the, it's to, finding the positive as well is important. So, but the jealousy, the rejection, all that. Um, let's just do one more real quick. Okay. Um, what it, so like, do you know kind of what industry you want to get into or is there kind of a, a vision you have like career wise? Sports management. Sports management? Okay. Sports management. A lot of my buddies that graduated sports management, they were not managing sports teams. They were selling tickets. Getting a lot of this. Tons of this. Um, as my buddy Mark Kent, uh, he, I mean, he got into, he played basketball in college. He played for Riverside, actually, too. Uh, but he, um, it was, it was, he was just selling tickets. And I, I can't remember what team he was selling for, but then he went to the Bobcats. 
again, talking about you have to create it. What happened with the Bobcats, uh, just based on, again, this is secondhand information, not trying to like bash any of their, but like, they, they're, just the situation is you had pretty much a lot of the main sponsors were already kind of taken. So he had to get creative, think outside the box, right? Go outside the norm and like, okay, well we can't, you know, Budweiser's not gonna do, you know, do their huge thing here, but what if we get a bunch of microbrewers together and we can like, you know, do something special like that. Um, and then uh, he's with the Cavs when the Cavs were do, doing really well and then uh, when LeBron left, he, I think he was with like the Dallas Star. And so he's, but now, I mean, like that's the thing is now he is, he's basically with the Columbus Blue Jackets now, hockey. You know, so hockey, I'm sure it wasn't part of his vision, right? Nowhere in his life career plan, sports management classes, you're thinking like, man, I can't wait to get into hockey. But like now, I mean, he's, he's killing it with them and he's, you know, he's, he's doing a great job there. Um, another buddy of mine, uh, he is, now he's traveling because now he's doing all the stuff for uh, like FIFA, like soccer teams in, in, in Europe and all that. But he did like the Miami Formula One last year before that. Um, he was with the San Diego Padres. I met him with, when he was in Cleveland and met him at a networking event. And he's like one of those things like, again, trying to like, how can I help you? And then it turned in, he became a client of mine. And, um, but he also had a sports management background. He was at the Spurs before he came to Cleveland. Guess what he was doing? Selling tickets. Getting a lot of rejection. Uh, his brother works for NASCAR. Same thing, right? But what's cool is like when I first got introduced to his brother, when he referred me to him, he was just very much in the initial phases. Now it's like he's kind of more running the show kind of thing. So just um, you know, think about the first track meet. Did you win your first meet? Probably like, it was like, man, that was rough, right? And then I remember going from the middle school races to the high school races, I'm like, man, everybody's faster. Then you go to the college races, man, everybody's faster, right? So just same thing is, you know, for those you don't have a, a running background, like it's, it's just, it's the, it's the same fundamentals of life and business that will challenge you to, to just do the work, especially when no one's looking. Take pride when everybody else is out partying and you're studying. There's a lot of fun that I missed out on. Is most of the fun just me being jealous that I wasn't there for that one random thing to happen? Parties are never what they're supposed to, like, it's never as epic. Like, New Year's Eve, dude, it's gonna be epic, dude, it's gonna be crazy. Like, no, it's the same thing. Everybody's wasted and falling over each other and nobody remembers anything. All right, cool. Nothing bigger. It's not the movies, it's as hard as we try it to be. So, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to wrap it up here. I wish I, I could spend the rest of my life talking to you guys. I don't know if that, you would want that, but um, no, you, you guys are rocking. Um, please feel free if you want to get connected or anything. George can help you get connected. Um, and just yeah, keep up the hard work. And again, after finals, yeah, if you can read that book, like, don't do it for me, but just, that's everything I wish I would have known coming out of college. So. It's a good book. Yep. Well, thank you. All right, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate good job. It.